Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and today I'm joined by Dr. Wayne Pickering, who is an, an amazing individual. He has a, an incredible life story and uh, very inspiring. He's uh, 66 years old and is incredibly fit, which I, you know, and which I think is uh, just an amazing testimony to the to the benefits of what he's applying to to his life personally, what he's going to share with us today. But he and he's going to explain some of that in in uh, this interview. Uh, but he is uh, a naturopathic physician and does quite a bit of counseling, and he, he lives in uh, the east coast of Florida, in mm -hmm. north central Florida. And uh, Oceanside, Oceanside, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, and he swims several miles a week in addition to extensive biking. It is a quite quite an impressive uh, exercise regime, regime. Um, but one of the things he's known for in the nutrition world, we're going to spend a lot of time on that, is food combining. So, mm -hmm. but before we get there, I think it's going to be very useful for people to understand some somewhat of your journey and uh, how you got from where you were, which is, you know, in many ways, not too different what the st typical American is today, obese and out of shape and eating the wrong foods, to where you are now. So if you can share your journey with us, I think people would be inspired by it. I'd be glad to. And you know, when I was a kid, you could call me chubby, but you can't call me tubby. <laughs> Hated. I couldn't stand being fat. So you were heavy as a child. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I looked at a picture the other day of us. <clears throat> and I was totally shocked to see me along my two brothers. Both of my brothers were real skinny, mm -hmm. and I was fat. Now it's the other way around. They're both obese, and I'm lean. Mm -hmm. Go figure. But <laughs> So I had rheumatic fever there three different times in my life. Physicians in West Texas told me that I would never make it past 30. I spent three tours in Vietnam, got wounded over there in my third term. Um, everything happens to us by divine design. All that sickness that I had, I had cancer in my right lip here, and they cut some of it out. I had muriatic acid, uh, acid splashed in my face, could never see out of this eye again. 60% vision on the left, and I was supposed to be totally blind. I can see perfectly. And everything happened at the right time in my life to bring me to where I am today. So all those setbacks in life really are nothing more than setups to come back. And I'd like to give Willie Jolly the credit for that title because uh, he, he came up with that brilliant title. And it's so true. So we have to look at our past as a point of reference and not some place of residence. Let's move on. Let's move on. We've got too much to do in life. So what were your challenges like before you were 30? 30? The rheumatic fever? The, um, well, were you, you were obese at 30, and was there some critical turnaround, turnaround some activity <clears throat> that you had that inspired your, your commitment to this healthy lifestyle? Yes. As I mentioned, things just happened for special reasons. I was in uh, Illinois when I came back from Vietnam, and I stayed up there for a year in Rockford, and uh, a little lady found me one day in a distraught situation, and she owned a health food store. And she took me down there after a series of coaching me along and coaxing me along, I should say. And I went in there and I bought a bottle of vitamins and a little book, How to Be Healthy with Natural Foods by Edwin G. Marsh. I, and I think it was the first book that I really ever read outside of textbooks in school. I was so moved by that. So I started dabbling here, dabbling there. And then I was getting sick at my stomach. When I was in the war, I can remember used to doubling over all the time. I was so sick at my stomach, had no idea that it had anything to do with what I was putting in me. I thought it was just an act of fate. My dad had heart disease, I have heart disease. Their family has this, I have. Little did I know, it's the lifestyle that's conducive to that. We may have genetic weaknesses, but to nurture that weakness along with bad health habits and all that thinking we can, we'll get away with it or we'll take a pill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. So all of these different challenges that I've had I look back, gout, I had gout so bad. Give me heart disease, don't give me gout. Mm -hmm. That was a bear. I remember I couldn't walk for three weeks. Couldn't get out of bed. Little did I know it was stuff that I was doing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So all of those challenges really uh, I got never me. been challenged with gout since then? Never. Okay. Oh gosh, no. And never been challenged with indigestion unless I were gonna uh, talk about food combining. Which um, violate the food combining principle. Exactly. 
And, uh, and it just so happened I was in a house this one day and saw a little food combining chart. On, it was like a postcard size. And I asked my friend, I said, Ralph, what is that all about? And I was always having stomach pains constantly. So he said, uh, that'll help you wipe out indigestion and you'll never have heartburn and uh, you conquer acid reflux. I said, come on, come on. I said, you're kidding. I said, do you mind if I borrow that? He said, I've got another one here. here, here's another one. So I took it home, put it on my refrigerator. I says, I'm going to try that. You know, you're always daring when mm -hmm. you're in your 20s. I shocked. 24 hours, never bothered with indigestion. I said, this can't be true, come on. So uh, a week goes by, I was like my old self again. And I said, I'm gonna go back to my old ways for a minute and try this. Stomach, oh, I keeled over, I was shocked, I couldn't believe it. So I said, wait, let me try this again. So I was rigid with it. And then I went off and three times is my signal. I always try things three times. Then when I say, okay, it's a done deal, I put it in my computer and I say, okay, this did this, I'm not gonna do that anymore. That's the only way I can keep on top of it. Mm -hmm. Because we all get little aches, we get a little this, we get a little that. And if you're running too much or whatever and you might get hurt, what have you. So that's the only way that I can do this. I have a barometer. Each one of these little problems that I've had are actually barometers for making me much more rigid. And I'm happy about that because that's my guide. Yeah, and you had a heart attack when you were young. No, I had a uh, rheumatic fever. Oh, no heart attack. No. Uh, well, I've had, uh, I've had those kind of conditions mm -hmm. to where I would fall, get totally dizzy, heart would hurt, and I said, what is going wrong? I mean, what? And, but nothing goes wrong. It's all for divine design. Everything has specific reasons why that's happening. And if we can get on top of that, and quit thinking, okay, what do I take for this? What do I take for that? We don't take this for this or take this for that. So we just have to stop causing it. And that's the true science. As you've indicated, and when you were on, I on the beach yesterday, and we even briefed on that, it's all about cause and effect. You know that and I know that. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I uh, relish the camaraderie that we do is the, uh, I, I mentioned to you the other day that we both speak English but we both speak the same language. That's so good. So hats off to you for bringing the messages to the table and that's not to stroke you. I watch your videos. I read your columns. Dead on. I love it. Well, the truth is uh, the truth and there's many different ways to approach it, but uh, you know, I think that there's a morality to that because my belief is that if you're helping people understand basic natural laws that improves their health, then, that, then that's a, a moral righteous thing to do, where, but where if you're not and you're doing something for pure motivation of profit mm -hmm. with complete uh, ignorance of what that impact has on human health, yes. then I think then that, that you know, tends to be, at least from a moral perspective, something that someone would want to avoid. <laughs> yes, I like what you just said a minute ago. Uh, in summation to that, beliefs will only be beliefs as long as we have people out there to believe them. Mm -hmm. But truth will always be truth, whether right. we believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, we're not garbage dumps with Harry Litz. This is our corporate headquarters, man. We own 100% stock in a blue chip corporation here. Too many of us sell our stock cheap. We need to put a high price tag on our stock mm -hmm. and, um, and move on because there's more to life than just eating or just running. It's a whole conglomerate, our career, our health, our economics, communication, knowledge, emotion, recreation, spiritual, all of those, and they actually form an acronym checkers. That's where I can keep that in my mind fresh. Mm -hmm. So there's more to life than just worrying about our health all the time. Mm -hmm. We need to be on purpose, look what you're doing. Uh, we need to keep the finances together. Mm -hmm. We have to learn things. I have a good little line. The more we learn, the more we earn, and the more we return. Mm -hmm. Give back. Yeah. Thank you. It's really an, an important part of the whole equation. So <clears throat> in all your years, decades really, of uh, educating individuals on how to apply these approaches, uh, what have been some of the most important principles you found that uh, are the most useful ones to, to inspire people to appreciate what you just said so that they can integrate that into their lifestyle and make important changes that they need to do to access 
the benefits that one receives when one follows these natural laws of health. Good call. I find that people only want what they want when the want is more than the cost. The cost of what's it going to take? You, we've only got 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to divvy that up? Uh, time is what we have. Wisdom is what we do with it. So we, we, uh, let's, let's take our 24 hours. We've got three groups of eight. Mm -hmm. We take eight hours rest, eight hours work, eight hours free time. Now, what I, what I want to do is add as much to my waking life as I can. It's knowing that it's just as good to sleep six hours at night and one in the day than it is to sleep eight straight. Hmm. So you've actually added one hour to your waking life, and I call that my power hour. 20 minutes for fitness, 20 minutes for spiritual, 20 minutes for emotional. And those kind of things, if we can get our time down, time is what we have, wisdom is what we do with it. Uh, from 6 to 10 in the morning, it's our get-go time. 10 to 2 is our peak energy time, peak performance time. 2 to 6 is the wind-down time. And t uh, 6 to 11 at night is your peak, interestingly enough, creative time. So that's just circadian rhythm, do you see? And if somebody is 50 years old and average lifespan is 80, that gives you 30 years. That's 360 months. Mm -hmm. This is if you're 50. Well, you sleep a third of that, you're down to 240. You use up a third of that with just the daily cares of life. You brush your teeth, you uh, shower, you go to the bathroom, you fix dinner, you clean up, and all of those basic things. So you're down to 120 months if you're 50. But most people at 50 are working half of that. So they're down to 60 months. That's only five years of your life that you have to be productive, to be be on purpose and be, do what we're really designed to do here. We don't have time to be sick. And the average American watches television four to six hours every single day. What a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And you've only got so much time left. So how am I going to divvy this up? That's why I take a certain amount of time out every day for fitness, a uh, certain amount for the food, a mm -hmm. certain amount for my job being on purpose. And uh, to summarize all that, and not to be too spiritual, but I think that if a man, a person, honors God <clears throat> and creates a service out of what he or she is genuinely passionate about, so that everybody who's involved in the service has equal opportunity to gain, then we all win. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, some useful insights. I'm wondering, though, <clears throat> any specific, how do you get someone to fully appreciate that so that they can integrate that into their life and apply some of these health principles? Well. Uh, it's kind of a challenge at times mm -hmm. because um, uh, nobody likes change except a wet baby. Mm -hmm. And until we want it bad enough, then I can help. But my question to the clients that I have, I said, are you interested or are you committed? If you're interested, I know somebody that might be able to help you. But if you're committed, I'm going to show you how to do it. So a lot of times it takes a brick wall mm -hmm. that comes in front of us before I got to do something about this. Someone like an alcoholic who frequently doesn't get better until they're in, in the gutter. Yes, well, here's an answer to that. We are the sum total of the five people we associate with the most. Mm -hmm. Everything is a thought. Everything is a thought. You've got the two key, uh, two key components about getting older and better and not old and bitter is motion and emotion. Motion is your movement, your thought, your fitness, and all that. Emotion is a thought, so you keep control of your thoughts. I've, I've discovered that in life, nothing outside of the body can stress us out. It's how we perceive it all. Mm -hmm. That's the stress right here. So everything is a thought. Our getting together was a thought. The, your home, this beautiful place we're in, this studio, it was a thought. The car I drove was a thought. Everything is a thought, and there's five things that govern our thoughts, and the first and most important is the company we keep. We pick up accents, we pick up styles. You have somebody come down from New Jersey down to South Carolina, and boy, they get in here, and they do all, and they, they talk different after a while. They go back up north, they say, oh, you talk different. You got an accent. Uh, you dress like that? Surely you don't eat like that. So we pick up habits, we pick up styles, we pick up everything just from the company we keep. The second one is what we read and watch. These govern our thoughts more than anything. Number three is the, uh, what we listen to. Number four, the words we speak. And number five is what we consume. Good water, good air, good food, 
And uh, so if we can get that down, and when people come up against kind of like a brick wall, I got to do, Ethel, we got to do something. And uh, to me, that would be hopefully the answer to that, what you were driving at. Yeah, and sometimes that brick wall isn't enough. Uh, yes. I mean, you've shared stories with, with many uh, prominent and wealthy individuals in your community that uh, you know personally who were confronted with a terminal illness, uh, different types of cancer, and the, even that wasn't enough of a brick wall uh, because so they, uh, you know, I think that is, that is a challenge, it, you know, certainly a challenge that we face as an educators mm -hmm. is to uh, help people understand mm -hmm. that there are uh, indeed other alternatives. Uh, that are more effective, less costly, less toxic, and uh, you know certainly worth a try or a consideration. But that, that is a challenge because the other side has been so effective. I mean, they, they really control most of the finances of the world. As a result of that, they're able to market very creatively and cleverly yes. and uh, use the media and, and really essentially brainwash people into this line of thinking that will benefit their corporate profits but won't but is not in alignment with natural health principles, so they're not going to get better for it in the, in the long term. Well, too many people also let age be their gauge. They actually think age causes sickness. Age has nothing to do with how old we are. Age is not a matter of years, it's a matter of condition. Mm -hmm. And you can keep your health up until you die, because we have six, 75 to 90 trillion cells in our body that work symbiotically in our behalf, striving towards health striving towards health, all that, you cut yourself, it's going to heal, subcortically, uh, without thought. It just does. My three great lessons about being healthy are very simple. You only get well, well, first of all, we're healthy automatically by design. Yes, that's, a, that's an interesting concept, but an important one, because many people don't believe that. They believe that our natural tendency is to be diseased and get oh. sick. That's the common belief. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you follow these natural principles, you're gonna, you, your body immediately tends to obliterate disease and move towards health. It's amazing, it's yeah. amazing. So we're healthy automatically by design and sick only by default. Mm -hmm. Number two, you don't catch disease. I've never seen anybody catch disease. We earn it. And I say it stems from crud in the blood, from being drunk with junk. Come on. And the third one is you get well basically by what comes out of you. People are looking for a pill for this, a pill for that, or this or this. Uh, it, uh, it, not by what goes into you. We get well by what comes out of us, never by what goes into us. One of the things that I like about your whole approach to the supplement line, our bodies are needing certain elements, certain conditions, not conditions, but ingredients. Mm -hmm. And the uh, supplement line that you, uh, you embrace always has those in abundance so that the body can use more effectively. And if people would understand that supplements are not circumvents, they're there to complement the meal, not to take the place of the meal. Get the meal down, get the nutrition down, and once we get that, and can I address well, you? Well, just with the term, the actual meaning of the word, supplement means in addition to, it doesn't you. mean in place of. Thank you, that's yeah. exactly my sentence. Can we address the, uh, uh, where nutrition falls in? Sure, absolutely, equation? because okay. uh, you know, that's one of the, the reasons I embraced your, our friendship is that uh, you're so aligned and understanding the nutrition as the foundation, which is really my primary tool, tool also. I mean, there are other tools you can use, mm -hmm. but nutrition, and we certainly recognize those, but nutrition is sort of is at the basics of it. I mean, because we're both equally committed to fitness too. Mm -hmm. But that's a relatively small part of the equation when you compare it to nutrition. Yeah, the nine things that I explained a moment ago, attitude, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, tenacity, mm -hmm. gotta stay with it, air, rest, and temperance we, in all we do. Temperance is very crucial. Mm -hmm. So many people get so into it that they're actually out of it. Now, let's address nutrition. Mm -hmm. Nutrition doesn't heal. It doesn't cure. It doesn't do anything, actually. Here's all nutrition is. It's a series of four processes that the body employs to make food materials for the body to use. Now, what are those four processes? It has to break down. It's digestion. Then it has to get into the bloodstream. It's called absorption. Basic physiology and anatomy. Then the body will use it. It's called assimilation. Then the body gets rid of. Elimination, so digestion, absorption, assimilation, elimination. This is just common knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So it doesn't heal, it doesn't cure, and it doesn't, actually as I mentioned, it doesn't do anything. Now, it's a science though, and it never changes. It's how we apply it that changes. So if we understand that's nutrition. Now, people will say, well, how can I get what I'm supposed to get in, in my body? I said, there's four components that if you embrace these four components into your lifestyle with nutrition, first of all, we need to eat the foods that's in season. Must eat food when they're in season. Why is that so important? First of all, our Creator has masterfully designed us and has certain foods in season for this. I never eat watermelons in the, in the uh, Christmas time. <laughs> They're not conducive. Even though the food is good, it's not good at that time of year. So we need to eat foods when they're in season. How can you tell if they're in season? Now our food combining guy that you and I have talked about a few times, they have all of the foods that's in there that we need to and how they combine and all that, and when each one of them are in season. But here's how you tell if you don't have our food combining guy. Uh, if they're, when they're the cheapest in the store, and when they're the most abundant. Mm -hmm. So, eat foods when they're in season. Or ideally, if you're growing them in your backyard. Oh, please. You, <laughs> you're getting on my nerves. You've got this thing down. I love it out there in your yard. It's gorgeous. If you've never seen Dr. Mercola's, if you've never seen Dr. Mercola's house, you are in for a treat when you have that opportunity. So, eat them when they're in season and according to the type of environment that you're in. Watermelons are good, but you don't think they would help an Eskimo. Even though it's a good food, they're not conducive to that type of environment. And another uh, uh, point to ponder when I'm eating foods, and they pick everything green to ship it to you. I was shocked to find that over 50%, over 50% of all of the food grown in this country rots before it ever gets to the consumer. I was shocked. I was watching on a PBS uh, video one evening. I couldn't believe it. So that's one of the reasons they pick everything so great. Now a lot of fruits uh, will not ripen after they're picked. So I don't eat apples in the south because they don't grow here other than the golden delicious and the gravenstein and people will bring me apples and they know that's the ones that I enjoy the most and I'll have them. A, a bushel last me a whole year and I uh, make a little apple pear sauce and that kind of stuff with them just for once in a while. So eat foods when they're in season Eat foods and grow, uh, according to the type of environment, environment you're in, pardon me, and also according to the activity that you're involved in. It wouldn't do us any good if you and I were sitting behind our desk all day long and try to eat the same thing as a triathlete would be doing, or a bodybuilder, whatever. So the, the activity, and the fourth one, according to your body's digestive chemistry. Nutrition, if those four components are in place with your nutrition, you've got a good plan. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. Cool. So now about food combining. Where does that fit in? Mm -hmm. And uh, food combining is very simple and we'll walk through that here. I'll have a chart here for you I'll be sharing with you in a moment. But uh, food combining, all that really is, is a sensible, logical way, scientific way to eat your food so that everything you eat stands the best chance of digesting. Getting through you with the least hassle. Because if something is inharmonious, that doesn't mean it's halfway harmonious. It's not harmonious. If something's insane, that doesn't mean they're halfway insane. If something's not di indigesting, it's not digesting. So what's happening? Our whole body is going through a whole turmoil. Gas, burp, not feeling good, heartburn, uh, acid reflux, indigestion, uh, cramps. And there are more remedies for indigestion than you can shake a stick at. So uh, one of the things you're known for is this food combining and you've really brought that to the forefront in nu nutrition. And so we've got the, some charts that you brought with you so that we could go over this in more detail. But hopefully uh, you'll be able to help us understand better uh, how to apply these food combining principles so we can optimize our health. Yes, as I mentioned, you know, if something is not digesting, brother, it's just not digesting. Mm -hmm. So how can I take the food from my mouth to the anus and what is happening here throughout this whole digestive process? We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But we have 10 systems in our body. 
the muscular system, skeletal system, urinary system, uh, uh, lymphatic system, vascular system, reproductive system, glandular system, there's 10 of them. Mm -hmm. And the one we have the most say-so about is the digestive process. That's what we're in control with. What goes in here? And then our thoughts, do you see, help to govern chemistry. And the reason I'm going to bring the thoughts back into play, it, that's so important. When I was a kid, we used to go up, my, my dad had three sisters. Uh, each Sunday we would go up to one of the sisters on the farm. And the fourth Sunday, we always used to go out to eat once a week. As a family, at that one special place. And I can still remember Aunt Jean. Everybody has an Aunt Jean. I got an Aunt Jean. She's a jewel. I love her to death. And, uh, and she's still alive today at 88, uh, 88 or 89, something like that. She put, used to put this big hot apple pie out on the windowsill. Now we're talking digestion here. Just the thought of that right now makes my mouth water. Not that I would eat it, but it does. And what's happening there? A thought is initiating the digestive process to get that going. So I wonder what a negative thought would do with the digestive process and all the chemistry that is in within the body. So when we sit down to eat, it's crucial to don't talk about problems at the, at the dinner table. Talk about joyous things just because it gives you a chance to get together. And eat according to your body's digestive chemistry uh, and you're off to the races. Part of a little side note there. Well, well before you go on to the side note, because uh, I think this is an important point that's frequently overlooked, there are many people who believe th that praying or expressing gratitude before you eat is also aligned with that same principle and that it, it tends to uh, improve the digestion mm -hmm. and may in fact in some way purify the food. So I'm wondering if you have any comments on that because yeah. there's a lot of people energetically who believe that's very beneficial. I, I do too actually. Uh, I guess I could sum it down to a little saying that what we think about and think about, we bring about. So if, if I give you a thousand dollars and you just put it in your pocket and walked away and the next day I gave you another thousand, you did it three or four different times, chances are I'm not going to be so eager to give you another thousand dollars. So when we give thanks and true appreciation for what we get and what we're about to receive, then we open the door for abundance. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we think about and think about, we bring about. So prayer before a meal is very good and it actually helps to set the, the mindset to that uh, of, of gra gratitude. So I think the digestive process would be, uh, in that regard, enhanced. Mm -hmm. So the digestive process is what we have the most say so about. Now a little while ago, let's just go over this if you will. A little while ago I did mention, let me see if I have a pen here in my pocket, that up here in the mouth, the stomach, the duodenum or the duodenum, however you want to pronounce it, and then of course the jejunum. This is where the food breaks down. Now the food eventually has to get into the bloodstream somehow and it gets into the bloodstream down here in the, the ileum of the digestive process. And then the body would use and everything and then the fiber and everything that's held back dumps into the cecum here and you have a valve, it's called the ileocecal valve and that opens like a sphincter, it's called a sphincter actually as you know and it opens much like a check valve and will allow food to go through here and then the peristaltic action will help pull this up like this and this is the elimination process and out the rectum. Okay? And that process is impaired in many many people. Very! Oh, it's amazing. In, hey, a little thought, by the way, the, the wonders of the body. By the time the food leaves the small intestines, about 95% water. Mm -hmm. By the time it leaves the rectum, the anus, it's only 2-3% to 3 water. So we have a recycling system within this colon here that's remarkable. That if we didn't have it, we would have to drink 20-25 to 25 gallons of water every day just to keep going. So the marvels of this awesome body that we have is if we can just respect it and not abuse it, then we're all set. So here's where the food breaks down. Let's just talk about step one, two, three, and four, and then we get the food combining down. Would that be fair? Sure. Okay, there's one, two, three, four. Now you get two kinds of digestion. You got mechanical, chewing, and then the churning, 
It's called peristaltic action, much like when you uh, milk a cow, do you see, you know, and that's the way it moves through. And then stage two, stage three, stage four. So we got mechanical and then chemical. There's only one food that chemically breaks down in the stomach and it's called protein. And they require pepsin, a very, very high acidic uh, in, in, in conjunction with the hydrochloric acid. But the hydrochloric acid doesn't have the ability to break the food down. What that does basically is just set the medium for the concentration of the amount of pepsin that's poured into the stomach to digest whatever food that's in there. The intelligence of this human body is phenomenal. So, one, two, three, four. We get three categories of food. Proteins, carbohydrates, fats. Proteins begin their digestion chemically in the stomach. Carbohydrates, you get two kinds, your fruit and your starches. Starches require three levels of breakdown. So if protein is the only food that breaks down in the stomach chemically, and we've only got four, the very first stage on digestion of starch is in the mouth. That's why it's crucial to chew your starches up. Get the salivary amylase going, get the tylen in there, and get all that process going. Then it comes down into the stomach. Pre-digested. What's that? Pre-digested. Yeah, and then it gets in here, and it does a little peristaltic action to boost it through this pyloric valve, it's called, and then the food can go in here, and then that valve closes back off to where it doesn't shoot back into the stomach. Okay. So you got one, two, three places where your starch is digested and that's where they go. So if we can keep this in mind, never to eat proteins and starches at the same meal because it is all American diet. Mm -hmm. Everybody does it. What about the hamburger on the bun, hot dog on the bun, spaghetti and meatballs, macaroni and cheese, uh, meat and potatoes, uh, pizza. I wanted to comment there's because there seems to be another area where a lot of people have problems and I didn't recall you mentioned it which is the lower esophageal sphincter right at the, the where the esophagus comes into the stomach. Yes. And uh, if that's not functioning properly then that can contribute to GERD, gastroesophageal reflux. Absolutely. And you know it's, it seems to be one of the most common problems that people take medications for. Mm -hmm. and probably one of the ones that's easiest to alleviate with this type of approach. Absolutely. And uh, again, nobody likes change except a wet baby. Mm -hmm. That was a valuable lesson I had to learn. So we're going to look for something to appease a condition much faster than we ever will to make the necessary changes. But who do you believe? And I was always distraught trying this, trying that. Trying. I said, okay, wait a minute. So I went back to school. And I was lifeguarding for four years there, and so I worked six months on, and I took six months and went back to school and learned how the. I said, I got to learn how this body works, and understanding the chemistry of this. And I don't expect everybody to do it. That's why I made the food combining guide over here, so that way you know precisely what to do. Here's your proteins. Here's your starches. Here's how they digest, and all of that. Okay, so that was, and I made that piece of work for me. Mm -hmm. I had so many requests for it. Again, things just don't happen. They happen justly. My indigestion, my sickness all the time led me in a good direction. And I made that piece of work as my guideline. A girlfriend of mine asked me, honey, can you make me one of those? Oh, mm -hmm. And I had to go in and get another four color job and it was very expensive. So one day I just went in, I, I asked the printers how much it would be to make a thousand. And I put them out there in my lifeguard stand. I was shocked at the amount of people who came by. Where can I get one of these? And that's how I started my business. So understanding how the body works in the digestive process, that'd be great. Now, what about desserts? So we know that no proteins and starches. Let's stay there. I got ahead of myself. Proteins, starches. Starches require an alkaline digestive medium to digest. The stomach if you put your fist in your stomach while they're digesting steaks and all that, chances are you wouldn't have a hand anymore. The acid is intense. So how does that not eat the stomach away? The mucous membranes and everything in the stomach linings and all that, that helps to uh, curtail that. So when you mix them both together, acid type of food and an alkaline, basic chemistry shows that they don't digest, they neutralize. So then what happens? 
if the food, as I say, is not digesting, it doesn't halfway digest, it either does or it doesn't, it's going through the body, throwing off all kinds of turmoil. And uh, let's go back to the esophagus thing, that's very well said. You have a cardiac sphincter here, and of course the esophagus area up and through here, that notice when you vomit, you would think it would hurt as it was coming out the mouth, but no, it doesn't, it hurts here and here. Because the body will do everything it can for the sake of survival, self-preservation, and will shoot it out. Because sometimes it becomes so toxic, the body says, wait a minute, I gotta get rid of this. And out it comes, whether we like it or not. So, no proteins and starches at the same meal, crucial. Now the second- Is that one of your most ba basic- uh Principles. Food principles? Yes, sir. There's three. I have three commandments to eating. Mm -hmm. There are seven basic food combining principles over here. And, uh, but there's three commandments you cannot deviate from. And the first one is no proteins and starches at the same meal. You don't have to be a vegetarian. Uh, you could be. As a matter of fact, I kind of encourage people to go in more in that direction. But I'll still, I'll still eat a little fish from time to time. Uh, but that would be the only animal kind of source that I would ever eat and you know you and I we have a great source down here in Florida for some good fish but there's great places all over the country mm -hmm. uh, or wherever you're living internationally to, to get that so uh, I would always have greens with proteins greens with proteins they have the fiber the problem with meat of course is it has no fiber and has no carbohydrates so th now you've got to uh, you're going to be kind of low on energy. People eat protein for breakfast and now they got to have a cup of coffee to get that up. And uh, when we don't combine our foods properly, a myriad of things happen. I'll be sharing with that in a moment. Okay, so no proteins and starches at the same meal. The second one, no fruits and vegetables at the same meal. It's crucial. Now, why is that? Fruits are a double sugar and a single sugar, whereas the starches are a triple sugar, just to make this easy. The double sugar, your fruits, some of them, okay? They get past this valve because this is where your fruits digest, not in the stomach. They mechanically break down in the stomach, but chemically they break down here in stage three and four, which is your duodenum, duodenum, whatever you pronounce it like, and then the jejunum. That's where they digest. That's why it's so crucial, never eat dessert after a meal. Before a meal? Always before. Mm -hmm. Never after, because when we eat the dessert after the meal, then it stays in the stomach and starts rotting again, because that's not where it's going to digest chemically. Would that be the same time of period to wait before eat, uh, after eating a fruit before you eat another food? The amount of time to eat to wait after eating a fruit, how long should that be? Always an hour. An hour. Yeah, that's a great question. As a matter of fact, well, let's say fruit starts protein, okay? After you eat fruit, wait one hour. Starch, two hours. Protein, three. Okay. All right, very simple. Okay, now, when you're coming down here, here's a third commandment you cannot deviate from. I don't care where you come from, what genetic background we have, or, or a strength. Eat melons alone, or leave them alone, or your stomach will moan. Mm -hmm. And everybody that comes to me, I was doing a big seminar over there for a bunch of physicians in Orlando this time. And a lady was in there and she come up, uh, she's uh, from um, uh, Paraguay or something. Dog to picketing. Would you tell me again why I should not eat melons with anything else? I shared with her. She called me in, about a week later and said she was shocked. First time in 30 years. She said she could eat melons and not be bothered with them. Eat them before because they're a simple sugar and they get through all of this very quickly. Now let me, I, I did make a, a little blunder here a moment ago about this pyloric valve and uh, when we eat the desserts before the meal. This valve opens much like a check valve, allow food to go through and it, it's called a sphincter and it won't allow that to come back into the stomach. Okay, so when we eat this, the desserts first, it gets down there and they can't shoot back in the stomach through all this peristaltic action to where it'll start rotting. So that's one of the pluses of that pyloric valve. Now, when you eat the melons first, they get through the stomach very quickly and get down into here 
and then they'll slowly do their thing and finish off down through here and then we've got it. So the three commandments to food combining is very simple. No proteins and starches at the same meal. That doesn't mean you can't eat protein or you can't eat them. Let's eat a proper sequence of a day, okay? The proper sequence of the day that we embrace on our uh, Mango Man diet. If you go in there, we've got 400. And, and Mango Man is one of your nicknames. Yes. Yeah, because we, you love mangoes. Well, I love mangoes. I love mangoes. When I was in the war, I can remember, uh, I had my first mango in the Philippines when I had to take some leave down there from the war in Vietnam. And I, I asked them, what is that? Well, that's a, ma a, a what? A mango. I've never heard of one. <laughs> I've never forgot them. And that's been, golly, 45 years. And we have a source right here that uh, uh, propagates mangoes from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And they named one after us. And it's called the Pickering. I'm elated. I'm ecstatic about it. I can't wait to give you a few of those when they're in season next year again. Mm -hmm. So anyway, first commandment is... No proteins and starches at the same meal. Second one, no fruits and vegetables at the same meal. And, and just, to be, just a quick question there. Many people consider tomatoes a fruit. So would you, is it, how would you classify that? Because it's common to put tomatoes in a salad. That's a very good question. Tomatoes are a fruit vegetable. And even though they don't have the sugar that like an orange would, mm -hmm. they're still an acid fruit vegetable. Now, here's the, the best salad I know if you're going to have tomatoes in it. Any kind of a plant, a vegetable that has a seed in it, for example, summer squash, zucchini squash, eggplant, cucumbers, bell peppers, um, uh, I guess I've named them all, mm -hmm. okra. Those are all fruit vegetables. So your tomatoes go well with those, and since lettuce and celery have a neutral effect on the, as far as the breakdown of food, the, the celery and the lettuce combine very well with all of that. And then you can add avocados. One time you and I are gonna come back and we're gonna be preparing a big meal for your audience, and I'm gonna show them how to make an avocado supreme mm -hmm. and the mango mambo ice cream. Come on now. Very good, very good. Okay. Did I answer that question? I think so. So would you classify those other fruit vegetables uh, like bell peppers? Was that, would that be in the same classification then as tomatoes that somewhat ideally not should be included in the salad? Or is less of an issue than tomatoes because there's less carbohydrates? Right. Yes. Um, uh, tomatoes are if, uh, have an effect, but it would be good if you could get them from... One of my key components of being healthy support your local organic farmer mm -hmm. or grow to your own thank you and i grow uh, you know i have compost everywhere in my backyard mm -hmm. and i'll throw things out and all of a sudden a tree will grow and it produces fruit thank you very much i've got papaya trees mango trees plum trees galore mm -hmm. and uh, for the skin i have all those aloe plants and mm -hmm. everything that are just the best i've ever had mm -hmm. and you can use a little pardon me, a little space in your yard. And, uh, oh gosh, man, uh, you can grow and eat free. They say when you plant a tree, you eat free. Mm -hmm. If you can get before the squirrels get there. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so getting food combining down, some of the things that I've noticed in my life and all of my clients, they conquer acid reflux right away. Mm -hmm. Indigestion they are, is eliminated out of your life forever. And the acid reflux, with the conquer acid reflux and heartburn and all that, oh man, what a, what a recovery that is. There's so many problems. What is it? Uh, Dr. Everett Koop was telling me, uh, I was reading, to where he said 16 out of 21 deaths in this country are caused by poor nutrition. Now that says a lot when you think about it. Look at all of the people that are raped or murdered or shot or uh, what have you, accidents. Mm -hmm. That's 16 out of 21 deaths in That's our country from 80%. that. percent I am shocked. So are there any other key principles you want to expand on in the, in the, in your the food, food combining? combining? Yeah, uh, acid fruits will not combine with starches. Mm -hmm. they, they just, uh, all right, let me give you a little example. 
Somebody in my audience here not too long ago said, I don't believe in that food combining. I said, really? Said, come on up here. Hey, come on up there, yeah, you know. And, well, you know, and, and sitting around, you know, grumbling and all that. I said, neighbor, I said, I want you to try this piece of lemon and I want you to have this banana with it. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. I said, why? Well, I don't know. And so he ate it anyway. Within five minutes, the guy was sick of the stomach. I said, I thought you didn't believe in food combining. That's a lousy combination right there. Sweets and sours. Or sours with starches. Common in many Asian cultures. Amazing. Sweet and sour sauce. Yep, yep. And as I always said, just because they're staples of a population doesn't give it any virtues. Mm -hmm. The true science is the way the body works. And that's what motivated me to move forward with the, uh, the, the combinations, the chemistry of the food, and making sure what grows in my type of environment. And, uh, uh, and the best way to find that out is just uh, ask your local farmer. Uh, support your local organic farmer, compost and recycle is a good rule of thumb. And you'll do a lot for not only the planet, but for yourself. Terrific. So is there anything on your guide you wanted to point out? Yeah, actually I had a few notes here that I, I uh, put together for us, uh, and, and you'll love this. We're so starved for good nutrition, and I had to write these down because there's no way I could remember all these different methods of uh, appeasement. Uh, we're so starved for good nutrition that we'll do anything and everything just for that. Now, listen to this, you'll love it. When we don't combine our foods properly, then we get gas, flatulence, heartburn, uh, uh, upset stomach, and voila, watch this, bring on the Rolates, the Tums, the Jebusel, the uh, Pepto-Bismol, the Digel, the Alka-Seltzer, the Bromo-Seltzer, the, the Gas-Sex, the, the this, the that. The Pepsid, the, the, Pepsi the Xantic, the Tagamut. And the Maalox, and the Maalox Plus, and the Milk of Magnesia, and the Ryopan. And, I mean, there's just to stop the hassles yeah. of the upset stomach. Now, check this out. Excuse me, I had to have these down for noses. No way I can remember all these. Sure. Now, for the headaches we get. We get aspirin, Tylenol, Bufferin, Excedrin, Advil, uh, Aleve. I mean, just to name a few. Now, check out what happens when the smell is coming out of our mouths. We have Listerine, mints, flavored chewing gum, and the list goes on by the thousands. Then, Which is almost always uh, sweetened with artificial sweeteners. Yeah, oh golly, and the, what, what a joke that is. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> we use underarm deodorants because the stuff is coming out of our bodies. Mm -hmm. We use rinse away because it's coming out of our stabs, uh, uh, scalps. Uh, absorbing Junior because it's coming out of our toes. We get Tegrin for that heartbreak of psoriasis. Check this out. x lax to open the door. Preparation H, preparation H to close it back up, if you will. And then uh, we, we have to take tranquilizers and a host of other things just to calm us down. Now, here, we start the day with caffeine. We get through the day with nicotine. We relax in the evening with alcohol and tranquilizers just to start the next day with something that fizzes. And we start the whole process over and over and over. It's a foolish process. So once we adopt the principles of good, sound nutrition, and nutrition is just one part of being healthy, and being healthy is just one part of the nine components of what we're here to do in this world. So too many people, I think, get so far into things, they're actually out of it. This is a real world here, man. We've got a plan for us to be here, and what can I do to sustain my health long enough to where I can go ahead and uh, uh, be here for the long haul. So do you have any other comments on your food combining guide you'd like to make? Yes, actually. That piece of work is now in 37 countries. Mm -hmm. And if people want to get the digestive process down, go to Combine When You Dine, CombineWhenYouDine.com, and that's the food combining guide to be shipped to you. And our Mango Man Diet has a 27-day course on how to digest your foods, all about food combining, and it's here's day one, day two, day three, and we've got 400 recipes, 139 articles, there's audio programs on there, six hours of nutrition audio programs, two more hours with the sad truth of high protein diet, so much on that. And uh, those two websites that I always encourage people to have as their arsenal to get their health under control, especially when it comes to the digestive process. Mm -hmm.
Now, tell me a little about, I know that you're constantly aware of your intake and this and that. What did you notice, if you will, about any of the food combining principles or uh, anything like that that you'd, if, if you'd like to share? Well, <clears throat> uh, my health has been pretty good for a long time. So, and digestion has always been great. I really haven't, haven't ever recall ever having any significant difficulties, or at least long term. So I didn't really notice anything specifically. Yeah. Um, but it's important to know because I think if you're, because the principles make sense, so it's kind of relatively foolish not to, to apply them. them anyway. And it's not that hard if you're eating a simple, simple uh, raw food diet for the most part. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to incorporate yeah. them. This is one of the things. Let me compliment the audience here. It's known that 2% of the people think logically for themselves. 8% think when they're in pain and suffering, and 90% would rather die than think. The fact that you were watching Dr. Joe Mercola's audio and video, uh, not audio, but video programs and reading his messages suggests to me that you're in that 2% and I'm gonna qualify that. Dr. Lester Breslow, the Dean of the School of Public Health in Los Angeles, California says that if you just change your lifestyle from a bad one to a better one, you can add as much as 14 years to your life. So for you to come in here and watch his videos of his different interviews and everything to learn how to add years to your life, which only takes about 30, 25, 30 minutes of your time to do that. That's a good trade off. So hats off to you for watching this kind of information. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, really. So, you know, it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity to have to pick the brains of some of the brightest people in health and fitness in the world and, and take what typically is, uh, taking them years or decades to compile and then condense it into a, a brief format so that we can, we can uh, benefit from that wisdom. Thank you. Now, here, uh, what's the order of the way we need to eat each day? Mm -hmm. Eat the least concentrated foods at the beginning of the day. The, the more uh, complex, I should say, in the middle of the day and the most concentrated at the last of the day. The most at the day, at the beginning, the most abundant uh, in the morning, then the least abundant in the noon time, and the least amount in the evening. But we've got that all turned around. The biggest meal of the day is usually the big dinner at night. And then we sit around, watch television. <laughs> My stomach, oh honey, what did you put in that gravy tonight, honey? Uh, or whatever. And they're not feeling well, then they go to bed, they start the whole process over again. If we just get a few little things down, we don't have to worry about all of that stuff. And going back to you with your, uh, the principles that you live by, I watch you. I've known you for quite a while now, and I watch what you consume. You're very cognizant of it. You grow what you can, and uh, you juice. You eat a lot of raw, and I know you weed out. We've eaten out a few times, and you don't have to be strange. We can go out and ask for this, ask for that. I've learned a good lesson, too. If we abide and get these principles of combination and the digestive process down, when you go out to eat, you and I went out to eat with uh, Aaron this one evening, and uh, I gave the lady a little recipe. Mm -hmm. Classic lesson I learned when I go to eat. I'm profit, their expense. They can chisel away at expense all day, but they can't do without profit. So if you ask for what you want in a nice way, they're gonna get it to you as a rule. If it's possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there was one ingredient on there that they didn't have that I remembered. Uh, I forgot what it was. Artichokes, I think. I think that was what it was, yeah. And uh, for the salad. Mm -hmm. And then when they come, uh, they, uh, you know, then I'll order what I'm going to have a little bit later. I've learned a lesson that if you order the meal too soon, they'll put it out under a light and it starts drying all that stuff out. So usually what I try to do is I get the salad first and then I'll go ahead and give them the order after I get through the salad and wait a few more minutes and then the food's there. Yeah. So as long we can do anything we want when we want it bad enough. Mm -hmm. And the whole digestive process, combinations of food, eat your fruit for breakfast, your starch for lunches, your proteins for your evening meal, you got it down. Get on with life. Yeah. And uh, uh, any, any final comments? Well, one of the uh, powerful tools that I found useful for myself personally, but for many of my friends and relatives, was the concept of intermittent fasting. Oh, yes. Where um, 
we give our bodies a break, not necessarily continuously, but on a regular basis because uh, it's based on the ancestral principle that our, our ancestors didn't have access to a grocery store 24-7. So it's highly likely that our digestive systems, our, our genetics, our biochemistry is optimized for the surge of food in a, in a rest period where we don't get any. And then when we follow that pattern, we're going to optimize our health. And specifically with respect to allowing us to burn fat as our primary fuel. And it's been my experience that the vast majority of the public, well over 95%, probably over 99%, are burning carbohydrates as their primary fuels as, as to burning fat. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have these massive cravings that they can't go for, these hypoglycemic attacks that they just, they run out of energy. Their, their fuel tank is empty and they've got to eat, otherwise they're collapsed. Mm -hmm. Because they can't burn or access the fat, even though they might be carrying 50, 100, 150 pounds of extra fat. They can't burn it. So I found intermittent fasting a useful tool to employ for many people to sort of catalyze that whole process. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, I've shared this, I think, with you in one of our previous conversations uh, behind the scenes, so to speak, about fasting and my experiences with it. I think that if anybody truly wanted to embrace how to feel really good, stop everything. I used to lay on the floor 20 different times I did this, that's my record, eight-day fasts. I've known people that go 30-day fasts, 60-day fasts, and not eat a thing. But under supervision only, if, if people are going to fast over a day or two, supervision only. And there's so many places in North America here that you can go fasting retreats. But I embrace fasting. I'm glad you brought that up. That to me is the fastest way, no pun intended when you think about it, of getting well safely. And so once we use, that's part of one of my uh, strategies in helping people turn their health around, stop everything. And I used to lay there on a nice mat on the floor, hands like so, gallon of water, pen and paper, because boy, the thoughts that come to your mind mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Now, in conclusion to all of this, <clears throat> let's think like this, everybody. We need to change our philosophy on life. Life is not going to change to suit us. We need to, we're already out of first grade. The reason why they make those seats so small because we can't fit in them anymore. So we need to change our philosophy on, on what we're doing with our health and watch your whole life change dramatically. This, as I mentioned a little while ago, is not a garbage dump with a hair it is. This is all we got. Our past may be blemished, but our future is spotless. You're special with an unnegotiable self-worth. Don't sell your stock cheap because you own 100% stock in a blue chip corporation Put a high price tag on your stock and move forward in life. And think about this. Combine when you dine to get the correct effect and watch your life just be a joy to be lived and not some problem to be solved. Thank you for having me. Well, great. Well, thank you for uh, sharing your wisdom. And just in summary, I'm wondering if there's, uh, uh, if you could repeat your sites again so the people, if they want to access your food combining guide, is there any uh, sort of abbreviated version that's available for free, sort of a condensed version that people can look at and try, and if they want the more detailed version, there's a, they, they can purchase that one. I don't know if, if the company has any up there for free right now, okay. but if you would like, I have a, a food combining articles that we've, we've okay. written over the years, sure. that if anybody would like that, just go to mangoman.com mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ask us as per Dr. Joe Mercola's uh, uh, interview with you, please send me your food combining article. But neither wise man nor tool can work without the proper tools. You've got to have tools. I have coaches. I get tools. Uh, you name it, I get it if I know it's going to help me improve. Right. So I would encourage people to have this on their kitchen, a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And then when you get Mango Man Diet, that's good. All mangomandiet.com. That gets all your recipes, that gets articles, all the nutritional things that we did, six hours worth. There's $700 worth of goods on that site that people get for $47. I mean, okay. that's a giveaway. Sure. This one is $20 shipped to you and uh, uh, combinewhenyoudine.com. Okay. Combine when you dine. And the other is Mango Man Diet, and we're off to the races.
Okay. okay. Well, thank, well thank, you for, thank you for all your work. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and for being re really an inspiration to so many for applying this in a disciplined way and uh, showing the results. So. Ah, thank you very much, yes.